All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of Full Body Cast. Uh, this episode is the part two of our interview with Tim Noah at the Pond Beyond. And uh, we were very blessed to hang out there. When I say we, I mean uh, my brother, Jacqueline Morgley Loibel, uh, and myself. And uh, we were able to talk with him, spend the day with him, just chat it up, share some stories. In the first episode, once you go back to that, if you haven't listened to it, we talk about his career, you know, his inspirations growing up. We share some stories, uh, some personal moments. He sings a few songs. Now, in this episode is where a lot of those questions that I was collecting get asked. So if you were waiting for that, the first one, I'm sorry. You sat through that one. This is the second one that you get to hear your name. Ooh, maybe. And uh, and maybe an experience or two that was shared with him. So super excited. Uh, Go check him out. He also kind of talks about uh, where the... um, uh, Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater comes from and what it is. And we also talk about the Pond Beyond as well. And also a little bit more about his career after the uh, search of the, I'm going to say www.www.www because I don't, I've, I've recorded a minute and I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to redo it. Anyway, big shout out. Thanks to, to Tim Noah. Please go hit him up on social media. Go find uh, the, the Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater as well as um, the Pond Beyond. You can find those on Instagram. You can find those on Facebook. And then follow along and even leave comments, you know. Tell him how great he is and how much he impacted you as well. I'm sure he'd love to read that. You know, so when, when I, you know, he's reading these posts. When I'm posting this on Facebook, he's reading those comments. So feel free. If you haven't said something yet, put it on there share a memory, share a story. So anyway, thanks so much for listening and uh, really appreciate Tim Noah and uh, have a great day, everyone. Take care. All right. So um, I think I might make this a two-parter. So I'll, this is my own editing. In a, in a <laughs> sense. This is just for me. Note to Travis. You may want to do the two-parter here. Um so you had some friends. You brought this out. Um, they went scene by scene of things that they like. They're, like well, they're, was a fan. they're big fans of the Wazi Woodle. I don't know. If, I doubt that the kids have ever seen me perform, uh, but they've watched the movie. Clearly, they've. It's part of their family culture. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the the lovely thing is that there are people that go out of their way to let me know that, you know, the. That it's meaningful, that what we've created was meaningful to them. Well, let's. That's a good segue. It's a perfect segue. I'm gonna share some questions if you're okay with that. Some mm-hmm. stories. Let's see. Sorry. Um, who handled all the special effects of that of the for the wow wow wibble woggle wazzle woody woody? Oh, Wazzy. I could wazzy woody. I always. <laughs> You know, you had kids saying this, right? This is like yeah. this is like a well. That was part of the deal. Uh, fun for the kids could say th- say something that the adults had trouble would stumble <laughs> over. And then uh, in, in 2005, Cindy and I went to Ladakh, India, uh, up in the Himalayas, and uh, we taught uh, the teachers up there to uh, say say those words. Yeah, and they don't have W in their alphabet. Oh. So imagine how were they're trying to wrap that, their wrap their mouths around wow wow. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. They were they had fun with it, and and they la- they were actually fortunately uh, um, had they had a good time. Yeah, had a good time. Now uh, we had uh, Fletcher Nelson asked business side of it at the concerts and the shows, the live shows. Were you totally independent? Because uh, he remembers buying CDs from you, and and was were you producing your own CDs and and even your merchandise and all of that? Or? Noah's Art Productions. As the three principals were myself, my brother, and uh, my sister-in-law, Creed and Mary, and uh, we we were the constant. My my parents were also very involved in a. Uh, they uh, helped support us, get us going, and uh, they were, you know, on the peripheral. Yeah. And then um, Creed and Mary had daughters 
who grew up during this time. So this yeah. is going to sound really weird <laughs> and awkward when I say this because I said my, I want to say my ex-wife. Okay, that's always right. We say ex-wife, it's always right. But she remembers you coming to Olympia. Mm-hmm. And, no, maybe it wasn't Olympia. It was a. Uh, she said, "Ask him this." Um, Young Authors Conference mm-hmm. that you performed at. Her name was. Her name is Sadie. Yeah. And and that you had said that's my mm-hmm. niece's name. Is that one of those mm-hmm. the daughters that that? Uh... Yeah. The, their eldest daughter was Sadie, hmm. and Sadie actually was Sadie. Well, she wasn't in the movie, but later on she was. She was. Uh, coerced into getting into costumes, <laughs> did some stuff. But she also worked uh, at the table, at, at the uh, merchandising table, and sold things, and, you know, all hands on deck. We we had a couple of hired folks. We had, a, a, you know, as, as the organization became more successful, we were able to take on a, a couple of employees. Wow. Yeah. Uh, did you ever give... Uh, lessons to anybody else? Did you mentor anyone? Did you? Was there any point where, as you were, kind of in your prime, did you ever also look to pour into somebody else? Uh, not knowingly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, uh, I, I've become a teacher. I am a teacher. I do teach, uh, and I teach voice and guitar primarily, and I. And I coach uh, live performance. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm jumping around here. Okay, All right. Logan Corey says I used to watch Tim Noah almost every year at the Dad and Me Fun Run. If mm-hmm. you ever heard of that, he performed all the time. Yeah. So it wasn't just in schools. It was you were doing. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. So um, imagine. So uh, uh, imagine the progression uh, like this. Uh, I I started doing school assemblies uh, here and there, a few here and there. My brother and sister-in-law, excuse me, my brother and sister-in-law come on board, and now it becomes an organized effort. We're booking uh, school shows, and so I'm doing a lot of them. And and then the kids are coming home from school after the assembly, and they're telling their parents what they witnessed what they experienced and then the parents are getting curious and they're going well what's this all about why do i keep hearing (laughs) this about this tim noah guy and the wow wow whatever this is yeah and so then i started doing uh, um pta functions introducing now it's now it's moms and dads and kids perfect perfect that the ultimate honestly the Tim Noah audience is families. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know we say children because of, uh, the children are are kind of the pathway. They are the the, the opening. Uh, I don't know if there's a a movie with Johnny Depp and, and Kate Winslet. Uh, it's called uh, Neverland. Finding, oh, finding Neverland. Neverland. Yeah. So he talks about bringing the orphans into the theater right. to sit with. The the stuffed shirts, <laughs> yeah, right, to show them, how, yeah, how to enjoy that, how to enjoy of, that, yeah. 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 that experience. So that's very much what the case is. So what you'd have is the adults mm. experiencing it through their children, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's it's like a contact, yeah, yeah. high, right. You know the term contact, yeah. huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, so then it becomes this one, and now it's everyone. Yeah. It's not me. Right. It's not you. It's we. Yeah. Mm. And it's it. It's the it. Now we're all in it. Mm. No finer place to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could see how that could get addicting as well. You know where? Well, yeah, so, it, yeah, sure. It could be. You know, a lot of performers don't know how to handle getting off stage. Mm. Mm. Oh, they don't know what to do with it when when that's over. What did you do with that? Um, well, writing new songs and creating new things is is the important balance for me. Mm. 
uh, now being here and being out in nature. Frankly, it's lopsided right now. I'm not performing enough. Yeah. This is actually, I thank you for coming out and doing this. This is good for me. Oh, wow. I need, cool. I need to do this. It's, you know, I kind of lose myself a little bit yeah. when I'm not, because it's been such a part of my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Of course. Well, I'm happy that you were able to allow us to. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Like the the component of for us to contact you is, oh, he wouldn't want to hear from us. You know that that right. there's that, um, I don't know that fear insecurity. Sure on this end and I'm and and I don't know like what do you think about that or like that you are so mm-hmm. I mean and I was telling Travis like you're on Mr. Rogers level in my mind is <laughs> like that's a so to kind of breach that and just to see that you're a person is mm-hmm. tough well, uh, Travis we you, you and I talked about this when you first contacted me yeah and um I went through a similar thing. Uh, we have a theater in Snohomish called Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater. And um, when we first started out, we just did little um, open mics and things like that. And then somebody said, well, we could start having, you know, I was doing performances, occasional performance there. I said, we could have other performers come in and do something. I wonder if so-and-so would be interested in coming here. I said, well, why don't we give them a call and find <laughs> out, you know? It, 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 uh, we g- get cowed or we get afraid or whatever, but really that's the door, isn't it? That's j- all yeah. you have to do is ask. Right. Yeah. And what's the worst that could happen? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And if they don't want to, you know. Or the and best I've, that can I've had things yeah. like that happen where, I, you know, I mean, as simple as, I, there's a guy in Lake Stevens that puts on the most amazing light exhibition at Christmas, Valentine's Day. He's got this, this little square box of a house, but all over his yard, it's just like, oh, my God. You know, it must take him days and days to set this thing up. And I thought, well, I'm going to find out if he would help us design something for the theater like that. Didn't seem at all interested mm. in even talking to me about doing mm. something mm. like that. And so I was a little surprised yeah. because it seemed to me so whimsical and fun right. that why wouldn't he want to at least, you know, share what he... Right. Yeah. But yeah. it's not everybody's like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, lots of uh, lots of people saying, not real questions, but K- Kylie Helmold said, loved Tim No when I was younger. Uh, Candace Besaw said... I loved his videos. Um, Michelle Andrew said he was my favorite. Um, and then let's go. I'm just going through all the, uh, let's see here. Today I posted my journey. Hey, I'm heading out there. Shauna Arnzen said, can you ask him if that big, big booger is still picking on him? <laughs> he was one of my absolute favorites. I wish kids these days, these, these days could like something as entertaining as he was. Um, so, so I got to answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is the big booger still picking on me? Yeah. You know, I think uh, metaphorically speaking, uh, the big booger is, what is the big booger? The big booger is it's in our own mind, right? Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, have you ever been felt blue? Have you ever felt downtrodden? Have you ever felt, like, uh, what's the use? Have you ever? That's that's the big booger picking on you, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, you see it. Uh, you you can become alert to that, and say, oh, aha, uh-huh. <laughs> you're back. I remember you from before, and you know you you had power over me, and you made me feel less than good about myself, mm-hmm. or you made me feel. Um, hopeless or Mm -hmm. a sense of hopelessness and uh you can start to turn that's when i spoke to you like what some performers don't know what to do when they get off stage they feel this incredible energy and adrenaline and all that Mm -hmm. and now it's kind of like a crash Mm -hmm. right so what do you do with that now one of the fortunate things for me is i'm i'm kind of an introvert extrovert Mm -hmm. 
that's kind of me too. Yeah. I know exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I have my quiet time. I really like my alone time. I enjoy. Yeah. I, I like me. Right. You know, I get along with me for the most part. <laughs> Except when the big booger comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so the big booger can come in and, and start to tor- you know, yeah. start to color that in a way. But if you begin can recognize it and begin to become alert to it, then you can call it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then it becomes separate from you. Hmm. It creates a sep it's it's not of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So have you thought also as you guided us through our childhoods about guiding us through our middle age where you're like, Hey, here's a song about, or it's still like you're saying, it's still relevant. The big booger is always, it could be in your mind. What used to be in the hallways of the school, but now it's that voice in the back of your head as we've grown up and collected a lot of voices, former bosses, former coworkers, former neighbors. And, and, and as we, here we do something we hear that voice or many voices in the back of our head and so we almost have to wrestle through that so Mm -hmm. maybe it's your your songs are just as applicable to a five-year-old as they are Mm -hmm. a 35 45 55 year old i think so (laughs) i think (laughs) i think that i i think it's i think it is very quite simple in, in a lot of ways, uh, we make it as adults. We make it more complicated. Yeah. Uh, I think we have fun making it complicated. I think mm-hmm. that's all fun, and then we realize, and then we get lost in it, in our own smoke, mm. and and then maybe if we're fortunate, we get come to our senses and realize, no, it's really very simple, isn't it? Yeah. And simplicity. Now. When you were talking, a song came to mind. It's a new song. Yes. I'll, I'll sing for you. And I think this uh, illustrates maybe what I think in the, in a, a simple way of 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 uh, combat com, combating the big booger. <laughs> <laughs> and that's being grateful. And it's, mm-hmm. uh, this, this song is called "Thank You." In fact, I started with it. Sorry, fingers. Come on, try again. (laughs) I thank the mattress when I bounce out of bed. I thank my puppy with a pat on the head Every morning a shimmering surprise A friendly feast for my sleepy eyes My nose thanks a rose smelling so sweet My ears thank the blackbird singing twiddly tweet My toes thank the grass growing under my feet my eyes, my eyes thank the smiles on friendly faces I meet. I thank my fingers, they work and play. The kind and thoughtful words people say. I thank the sun for shining, the cloud with silver line, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this love, 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 lovely day. I thank my fingers, they work and play. The kind and thoughtful words people say. I thank the sun for shine, the cloud with silver line, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful, marvelous. 
Hallelujah, thank heaven above me for a perfectly, magically love, 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 lovely day. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. <sighs> this is refreshing. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Did you ever sing in church or anything? You talk about I, church? You're kind of gospel or, I mean, hallelujah. I'm just curious. I think I heard some of your... When there's you were, a, yeah. you know, there's, there's a uh, spiritual underlying thing in... Uh, there's, there's, there's running, there's a little river running through it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've been to church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't currently go to church. Yeah. Uh, you know, nature is kind of my church now. Uh, um, I've, I've sung in churches. Yes. I've performed, uh, in churches but not uh, gospel per se. Yeah. Yeah. I think the question also came from, because when we, we were, were kids, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you're a kid, it's kind of what you're used to possibly singing. Now, you had Stan Borson, too, right? So you right. were singing there, too. So I didn't know if there was any, like, you know, you just kind of enjoy singing wherever you go. You're singing here, singing there, you know, and... And get in that. So you weren't singing as a kid in the church kind of too often, it sounds like. There wasn't opportunities in the church that were in my neighborhood. Mm. You could sing You could sing with a congregation. Uh, you open the book and yeah. sing with a Presbyterian yeah. church, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't, no, there wasn't a soloist that I remember. If there was, you know, there, I don't remember them. Yeah. Um, so... If we go to, is it, it's Tim Noah? Is it Tim Noah's thumbnail theater, or is it? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. So, <laughs> when we decided to name the theater uh, and use my name, uh, I wanted to use. I only thought it was a good idea to use my name because of the notoriety that I had received. I felt it might help bring attention. It might help draw people to it so I stuck my name in there Cindy and I came up with thumbnail theater because it's small <laughs> and and it sounds fun to get thumbnail and theater yeah sound like uh, a lot of people what's the thumbnail what's that about so uh, a lot of people refer to it as the thumb uh, as for short it's a, a good nickname for it mm -hmm. which is which when you think about it you know yeah, humans ha are have that unique thing, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and uh, and then uh, do we call it the Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater, and do we call it Tim Noah's Thumbnail right. Theater? And um, a long way, a long answer to a very simple question: It is Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater. There's no S. There's no uh, uh, no the. Gotcha. Yeah. So Tim Noah, Thumbnail Theater. Would you mind just shouting the out the address out? Uh, yeah. Before I do that. Yeah. It's uh, and, and our byline is the Pacific Northwest's cozy home for the performing arts. Mm. I like it. Mm. Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater, the Pacific Northwest cozy home for the for, for the performing arts. It's a has a unique smallness. Mm. Mm. It's uh, we see it about 85, 90 people max, and it's a community uh, owned. It's our our board of directors owns it. I don't own it, mm. and um, it's a community that keeps it going, and it's the community that uh, during these times has donated to it and kept it going. Nice. We're still paying off a mortgage. Yeah. And um, you know, there's bills to we got to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, the community recognizes the value of of what we created. That's Super nice. appreciate that. Yeah. Now, what do you what do we expect? If we go down there, 
what I mean, you I saw we well we went there. I went there wrongly. Uh, that was my fault again. Um, but when we got there, I saw. Don't let the big booger pick on you. <laughs> yeah, you, you can let it go. Uh, okay. You can let it go. I'll flick it. It's gone. It's in the past. Um, I'll so, flick it. <laughs> so, so the uh, the it had like an open mic night, and it said family friendly open mic night. Now, yeah. does that mean if you want to come down, tell a story, play your music, sing a song, tell a joke? Is it just open up to anything, or what is it? Specific? Try to make it. Uh, try to make it. Uh, keep it within eight minutes. Gotcha. Two songs or eight minutes. Hmm. Ah. Some people fudge on this. Say oh, eight to ten. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not keen on that. Yeah. I say keep it eight. <laughs> you know, six, you, you, you you've eight. got to respect your audience. Yeah. Right. If you start taking too much liberty and you go on, and you're not respecting the other performers, right? There's right. other people waiting in the wings to go on stage, right. and you're dominating. You start to take and you start to blur the line. Now what is it? Now what have you got? Right chaos so we kind of keep it down we started out by doing three songs too long too much time on stage the audience gets restless the other performers waiting like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well open mics are always hard i've did open mic stand-up in the past and it's the yeah. sign-up sheet and then people go too long and you know you're yeah and then once they perform, they kind of jet out of there sometimes. I'm not saying everyone. Not nice. Yeah, it's like, hey, I sat here for 45 minutes waiting to get on. I listened to you. Not saying I didn't. I and, had fun. I enjoyed myself. But for you to just bounce and, well, it's just me telling my own joke. Well, right? you, br you bring up a very good point. It, it, and, and it's not taught. One of the things that Cindy feels, and I, she's a performer as well. I don't know if you're aware. But uh, she performs out at Remling. Cindy Soup is the, her stage name, and she performs out at Remlinger Farms. This last summer she did not. Yeah, it's yeah. looking like she might again this summer. We'll see. But uh, one of the things that she's pointed out is our, our part of our job is to teach young people how to be an audience. Yeah. How do you be an audience? How? What makes a performance... Besides the, who's on stage, what makes a performance enjoyable? Yeah. The audience. Mm. And how the audience responds, the attentiveness of the audience, the respect they show to the performer, allowing them, giving them space so that they can actually do the thing and, uh, to the best of their ability. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So so then as that's going on, so I, I'm, I'm guessing, are you there every, are you there for every? I am not. Do you have other people kind of uh, take take on that? Absolutely. And then do you ever go on there to kind of try out a perform a little bit yourself? I sure. Mean, <laughs> good. Okay. That's yeah. A quick, quick answer. Yeah. What else you got? Yeah, uh, you bet. And I encourage my students to do the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is a golden opportunity for you. Uh, a, a little quick thing about my history uh, performing. I, when I, I became a young adult. I was looking for, this is before my children's gig, right? I, I wanted to find places to perform, and I needed an audience to perform for. And I, you know, you know there were cocktail lounges, and there were taverns and things like that. But not a good fit for me, hmm. right? These aren't, this, it's not conducive for what I wanted to do. And I found a little coffee house in Tacoma called Court C Coffee House. This is back in the 70s. Right, early seventies, and like the thumbnail theater, the open mic there was run in a very quite a strict manner. You don't just come in, and you can't just sit at a table and start talking to your neighbor. You sit there and you listen, and that's what's expected. Mm -hmm. Or you will kindly be asked to mm -hmm. take your conversation elsewhere. So we sat and we listened, and as a, a direct benefit of that as a performer, as I got to hear myself in the room and feel the reaction of the audience listen back to me, right? And there's a connection that happened. And that connection became all, everything. Making a connection to the audience and through my music, that was gold, that's, that's, that's it. That's, so that's what we want to have happen for our performers 
them, you know, pay them the respect. Yeah. Give them, give them, you know, it's a sacred thing. Right. Yeah. That feedback that mm-hmm. you were given that they're then able to apply. It sounds like, I mean, yeah, no matter how good you are, if you're getting that, like that positive feedback, that just is, you can make all the mistakes you want, but as oh, people yeah. are listening and they're really oh, know, yes. jiving with what you're doing, you're just propelled even more to absolutely get better and grow. And oh yeah, that's such a, like you said, it is sacred. It is. It's so important. And, you know, and when I started performing for children, the same thing, I think I started to say earlier, you're on stage, you're up there, all eyes are on you. It's permission to stare, right? Yeah. You're giving the entire audience, go ahead, stare at me. <laughs> right. right. Go ahead, you know, give me your full attention. I like it. Because uh, <laughs> I'm that type of person. Right. But also, from that vantage point, you are seeing reactions. And you're seeing uh, what is working and what is not working. And you sense when you're losing the audience and when you have them. Mm. And so I'd see, you know, when I first started playing for kids, I'd stand there with my guitar and, you know, sing my little songs. And then I'd start to do a little, you know, yeah. like that. And, they, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they would respond to uh, the... And it was like, it was like, if you will, it was like God saying, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And I would record these things in my, they my subconscious, my conscious subconscious, I'd be alert to this. So this is working. And, and then I had my brother who would come, who came to every show I wow. did. He never missed a show. Wow. Yeah. He came to every show and we worked those shows together. And on, on the way there, we'd be talking. What are we going to do today? What's it going to, what, why are we doing this? And all the way home. Mm. And he'd say, did you notice what happened when you did that? Mm. Did you see how they responded to that? Uh, maybe you don't want to do that. You know, that, that was a distraction. So then little by little, the lens gets sharpened, right? right. And you realize... This is what works. Stick with what works. You can always add to what works. You right. can add more. It doesn't mean you narrow it. It just means that you get more clear on what it is that you're creating, the experience that you're creating for the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's so precious. And I, I, I would love to have every performer and every audience member understand the importance of all that. Huh. Um. We're uh, we're getting to that limited of time, so I want to make sure we hit a few other things. The pond beyond, the pond beyond. Yeah, tell us about what your vision is. We just walked around this beautiful property. Thank you. And it it, it was a lot of fun. It, you have a very nice way of giving the tour and stopping at certain points and pointing things out. I think that has probably been refined like you were talking about as you've been refining, as you've been probably given a few tours around the area. Yeah, I hope to get better at it. <laughs> no, you're pretty good at it already. Um, so what, what, what is it? Like, like, okay, so, yeah. so um, uh, Cindy and I, my love, my true love, Cindy and I uh, have been together since about 2004. We'd, uh, she, she co- we co-founded the... Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater, mm-hmm. uh, and that's I mean, we started by teaching a theater class together. Uh, 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 um, students were all children, and we just kept. Uh, Cindy's one of those people that just says yes. Mm. You know, if I have an idea, she goes, "Good idea, yes, let's do that." Or if you know, and we kind of do that for each other. Let's yeah, let's you know, and <laughs> that doesn't doesn't always. It's not always, it doesn't always work, right? Because <laughs> sometimes you got to get the end of the yes and like, yeah, but there's all this that comes with that yes. All the extra stuff that you have to do to make that a true yes. But for the most part, it really works. And we have this shared love of nature. She's a huge animal lover and dog lover. As you can see, we have three dogs. I didn't have a dog when I met her. Uh, I was kind of sworn off dogs. And frankly, I thought, okay, other people can have dogs. I'm not going to have a dog. She got me a dog. 
<laughs> now I'm, you know, they're part of the family. They're a huge part of the family. So th- my long way of getting back to the, the pond beyond, uh, the property spoke to us, but we had already been talking about a, a environmental arts and education center. Uh, given the state of our world, the, uh, our environment, uh, and the lack of, how should I say, emphasis, importance put on preserving, nurturing, loving nature and the environment seemed like it was just an open door to go, well, we got to do something about that. Maybe we could do something about that. Maybe we could help with that in Mm -hmm. some way. So we started visualizing having children, families come out. Uh, We don't know. It's still in... It's still forming, right? But the basic idea is to have a wonderful experience in nature. Learn to love it. If you don't learn to love it, you probably won't care about it. If you don't care about it, it's going to die. Let's put it bluntly. We, we, We have to love this place, this home we live in, and take care of it. And I don't want to be heavy about it. I want to be fun about it. Mm -hmm. I want to bring out the joy of it. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to put darkness and hellfire on children. I'm going to plant the seed, if you will, Mm -hmm. to use a metaphor, of environmental stewardship. Mm. Take care of it. Take part in it. Realize that we're all connected. All of this. We're all just part of it. Mm. Even those blackberry bushes? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so so there's things that belong, and there's, thing, there's things that we're here, yeah. uh, and we're part of this uh, ecosystem for decades. And then humanity came in, and they said, I know. We'll bring blackberries from, you know, (laughs) wherever they brought them from. And, you know, good idea, not, because they just really liked it here a lot, and they started taking over. So we do um, what we call uh, managing, you know, invasives, extracting invasive species as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pulled I pulled out a lot of scotch broom. That's being mm-hmm. that's a being a steward. Birds. Yeah, it is yeah. steward. Yeah, that's yeah. the big booger of the garden. Would be <laughs> yeah. Probably... yeah. Oh, nice. Now, how much do I owe you? Because I'm going to pay you. I need to pay. I you appreciate it. I, I will accept. Hmm. Uh, they're fifteen dollars. Okay, I don't have cash on me. <laughs> that's right. What's a good way to send it? To? Do you have? Do you like PayPal? Send me a check or. Yeah. Do you do PayPal or any of that stuff? Yeah, right now, my my store for my website is broken. Okay, re- I saw that. Rebuilding it, and uh, yes. I, I I hope I think you're going to find it exciting what I'm creating. Oh, I'm hoping good. to do a kind of an interactive Wazi Woodle website. I'm I'm doing the illustrations. For that it. would be sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty excited about it. Also, Winner of four Emmy awards. Was that pretty exciting? To get the to win an Emmy for it, I didn't win a single one of those. What <laughs> the production did? Production. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean the whole thing, right? I mean, that's gotta be. Of course, yes. I was so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my pals, you know, I my the people, you know, God, you know, what can I say? After all these years, you know, to hear from folks like you and and what have you, and you know, I, I love. I get letters. I, I emails and. I, so on, and I, I try to share every one of them with my team, the team that worked on this, and just to let them know that, uh, you know, and they love hearing from, they love hearing from people. That magic wand was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. That was- Man, that was so cool. I would just take my yellow wiffle ball bat and swing it around as if it was blowing me around. <laughs> like, I would, man, I would act this thing out all the time. Yeah. So we put some things in there like that. We're a little edgy, right? Yeah. Because it's explosives yeah. and it's 
uh, you know, fire. And at one point, I opened a book and fire. Fire, comes yeah, you did magic. Yeah, yeah, I was doing those at live shows and stuff, playing with fire. <laughs> and uh, you know, we kind of took it right up to the edge. What we felt was okay, exciting, but not exciting. Out we, of control. We wanted we wanted the show to be exciting. We didn't want any kids to hurt themselves. I bounced on the bed. Some parents frowned at that. I used the word <laughs> booger. Some parents <laughs> frowned at that. Teachers frowned at that. And we just kind of used our own barometer, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not talking close to the microphone. That's fine. Um, yeah, we just, you know, checked with ourselves. Yeah. And, and then I had my team, and I'd say, what do you think, you know? And, and if somebody really felt like strongly about something, but fortunately I had a team that was more like gung ho, like, no, 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 don't, don't concern yourself with that. It's okay. We had, when we produced the Wazi Woodle album, uh, there was a, a, a company that wanted to put it out, mm. a, a, a bigger C Cademan, I think they were called a big educational, uh, record company. And they, they were, yes, we would like we would like to uh, distribute your record for you, but you will need to change that booger thing. You're going to have to get rid of that. You're going to you know change it to bully or something like that. And we just went, you know, it was like no, right? We're mm -hmm. not going to do that. That, that no. Yeah. And you know that's just that's where that was what felt right to us. Who was the uh, who was the woman? Tim, don't forget your homework. That was Pat Royce, Patricia Royce. And she was co-producer on the, gets co-producer credit. She was one of the person, people that won an Emmy along with my brother for the production for, yeah. as producers. Wow. Yeah. And Pat and I have stayed friends. She lives in Carmel, California. Now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. So... Um, you're a creative type and you're still being creative and yeah. you're still drawing, you're still coming up with ideas. Yeah. How do you divide your time with those things? And maybe it's gotten easier, maybe it's gotten harder, but like, what is your sort of, I find my creative process gets like my, my schedule gets in the way of a lot of that stuff. And then my yeah. procrastination gets in the way of some of that stuff. Once I have the free time. Right. Um, how do you manage that or how have you managed that? Uh, that's a good question. I think that's a very good question. I don't think I manage very well, but what start, you know, at one point I was working, I had a TV, I was part of a TV show called How About That? It was in uh, late eighties. No, late 90s. it was late nineties, yeah. late nineties, two years on the TV show. I was not, wasn't working with my brother and sister-in-law. Those are the dogs we were mentioning earlier, <laughs> obviously. Can you hear that in the microphone? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we'll let them. So I started, I, I, they pulled the plug on the TV show. And all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, because I, I hadn't booked shows. Mm. Um, I, I was working with some folks that weren't really good at that. And so I didn't, I didn't have a safety net, mm -hmm. and I had a son and a wife, and I went to work for my neighbor in construction as a laborer. Mm. What age is this, would you say? You're, how old are you at that time? Oh, how does she know? I remember back. Uh, it was, uh, it was the, just suffice to say, it was the 90s. And I was not a spring, what you'd call a spring, spring chicken. chicken. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I was, I stayed in pretty good shape. The first week or two, I felt like I was going to die, mm -hmm. both mentally and physically, mm -hmm. spiritually. Mm -hmm. I thought, this is the end of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die. I'm doing now. I'm, uh, what, has come, what has become of me? And within, um, oh, I'd say, three weeks, I went. They handed me a sledgehammer and a few other tools, demolition tools, and all of a sudden, I started feeling really good. <laughs> I mean, I started feeling really good and physically really good, mm -hmm. and that raised my mental uh, yeah. awareness. And then, and then once we, feeling mentally and physically better, because I could go away from that job and not have to think about it. Mm -hmm. It was it was just manual labor. Pick this up, move it over here, 
drive away, you're done. And before that, I was doing, because of the career thing, I was kind of doing the spinning thing. Mm -hmm. In my mind, like, well, what am I going to do? What do you know? Which wears you out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, the mental thing will get you before anything. Yep. So I had something to do. I could do it. Boom. Boom. Knock it down a wall. <laughs> it was great. And I started feeling my own power. Right. And then I go, but where, well, how am I going to find time to create? So I'd get up early, even earlier, because I have to be on the job site sometimes 7 o'clock or so. i get up at 5 o'clock, and I'd go out in my little garage, and I'd put on my headphones and turn on the microphone and get into my zone, right, and start, cause I started writing songs. And I wrote a whole album's worth of uh, uh, Americana mm. uh, that way. And it was about kind of about my life at that time. And, and so it's a long way again about answering your question. I just was so determined mm -hmm. that to keep it alive. I, I, I knew it was important for my own sense of well-being yeah. that I would just make time wherever I could. And then I'd carry that with me throughout the day. I'd, if I started my day that way, those ideas would keep ah, going mm -hmm. in my subconscious and I would be developing things you know, while I'm doing the other and stuff. You're also yeah. and so I continue to this day, so I'll get up early in the morning, and right now I'm into illustrating and uh, this uh, website idea. And and I that so the harder part for me is divorcing myself, pulling myself out of that. Mm. Once I'm in it, I just want to stay in it. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, it's certainly it, 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 well, it's helpful. Thanks. Even with yeah. the podcasting for myself, it's like it consumes you. Like I actually had to tell myself yeah. at noon, you will no longer think about this for the rest of the day, and then I will. Yeah. Every once in a while, it comes in, I'll write down something. Okay, okay, I'm done thinking about it. I'll think yeah. about that tomorrow. Kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. But it's tough, especially when you got a, a dream and you have a you have like that vision, and then and it's so fun to be absorbed in it. Yeah. You know, it's it's so enthralling. Uh, my 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 mother, mother used to tell me, "You need to get outside. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go outside and do something." You know, and she was right. I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a balance, right? Mm -hmm. So we got another listener, Mark Herbert Schmidt. He was a bit, he was hitting me up all the time. When is it? When is it? Let me know. I gotta write this. I gotta write this. Gotta write these questions. Gotta write these questions. So he also likes to ask off the wall questions. Good. Okay. So we may cut any of them. I don't know if you don't want to answer them. Feel free as well. Okay. Okay. So this is Fair not enough. live, right? Fair enough. Uh, who who was your Tim Noah when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that was Stan, Stan Morrison. Stan Morrison, I guess. right? You kind of yeah. That. I named a, a several. It was kind of a yeah. conglomeration of of people. Mm -hmm. You know, Elvis Presley, right. even Roger Miller, Stan mm -hmm. Morrison, Walt Disney, uh, the Beatles, certainly all and everybody that set me on fire. Mm -hmm. You know, set gave me inspiration. Tim Noah, a stage name or real name? That's my name. That's your name. That's what I, I was. Uh, now, on the birth certificate, it says Lloyd Timothy Noah. Nobody ever called me Lloyd, except for one friend in high school, junior high school, who uh, his name is Norman Christopher Johnson, and nobody ever called him Norman. <laughs> but. I called him Norman, and he called me Lloyd. That's cool. That's, how you doing, Lloyd? Good, Norman. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen Death to Smoochie? I don't know if you've never if you've ever seen it. It's a '90s movie, but it's about it's like the dark side of the child of children entertainers. Oh, I it had like I've Danny heard. De. No, it was directed by Danny De. It had Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Williams yeah. and, uh, oh, I have to see that. Well, it's I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we were talking about not, okay. it's dark. Uh, it's uh, a dark uh, humor. Dark is it funny? Dark? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. Or is it just dark? It's, I think it's, it's pretty dark. dark. Yeah. yeah. So it's supposed to be funny dark, but, but it's but it's uh, it's it revolves around a very. Uh, purely joyful who's the edward norton, edward plays norton the... is just oh, a children's know, yeah. entertainer mm -hmm. and he enters into this world he gets big 
and it but it's like it's like ruthless it's like there's mm-hmm. there's there's like robin williams is it mm-hmm. was a uh He's like an actor too, and competitor he, type, and he yeah. was just jealous of it. And anyway, mm-hmm. yeah. it's maybe you'll find it. I don't well, know. yeah, Death to Smoochy. I think I've heard of it. Um, Cindy and I have talked about. I mean, there's a lot of humor in the whole, mm-hmm. you know, field of entertainment that we're in. It's pretty. <laughs> they even, you know. I don't know if you guys have you seen the Mr. Rogers movie or mm-hmm. the one Tom Hanks? No, Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom one? Hanks played. Yeah, yeah. There's a, that one, and then there's, there's a the documentary. documentary. Oh, no. uh, where he, where they talk about uh, you know because Michael Keaton was actually well, on his staff was a uh, part of his staff, and then they they had inside jokes there. You know, they had one guy that um, worked on the crew, and uh, you know. Mr. Rogers always goes to the closet to <laughs> hang up his sweater and stuff. And the guy uh, on one of the th- shows was standing in the closet <laughs> naked. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and he, he and, and Fred just fell down on the floor laughing. <laughs> you know, and he's a pretty straight laced right. yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but he had a sense of humor about himself too, I'm sure. But he took what he's, he, he, took the responsibility of what he did very seriously Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um if you were to make a comeback album or like a newer album i guess not really comeback uh what would be your primary focus to reach the youth of today um i think we kind of covered that probably a lot of the same stuff but i guess the thing that he was asking about is what's been lost over the years due to technology hindering imaginations and interactions among kids um would you do you feel like you would do anything to combat that? Uh, I, I, I take take the good and leave the rest. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Take whatever's good, you know, whatever works. Um, I've, I'm working on a. I've 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 written several things and I've written lots of songs, um, albums, CDs are kind of a thing of the past. What people are buying now is a, a song, maybe on. Uh, it, it's it's a whole different for music musicians. It's a whole different world now. It's got to be. And then you said you got a Spotify channel that you just. Uh... Yeah, we just started it, and and I frankly don't know a lot about it, but I want to help nur- nurture and grow that, and and I I'm, I also want to honor all those folks like yourselves who have you know grew up loving the wazi woodle the wazi woodle kind of has its own it's its, its own world yeah mm-hmm. and i want to uh i want to uh, address that in in a nice way and acknowledge that and help nurture it because mm-hmm. i think it it's meant a lot to a lot of people mm-hmm. yeah um lots of questions concerning when are you coming to Enumclaw again now i like i know we are in a pandemic and there's are you planning on once things open back up yeah i love you... to perform you know uh, uh, it's still very much a part of me and it informs my perspective if you will mm. whenever I get on stage i learn something from it and um it gives me contact, direct contact. So uh, when um, you, I'm I'm available. Mm. Gotcha. Put it that way. Uh, there's a little theater, uh, or not so little theater. Uh, you know of it, in Claw, the, the, the chalet. chalet, the chalet, yeah. the chalet and yeah. they've had me there a few times. Uh, I don't. It doesn't have to be the chalet. Um, I I would perform outdoors, indoors. Yeah. What what have you? And, you know, that, that's a way of looking at it. Something you want to see, you know, any of you want to see ha- happen, you can be a part of helping to make it happen. That's true. Cool. Sure. Let it be known that Tim Noah is ready and willing. Uh, it does take some doing. Uh, if, if you don't have a sound system, then I need to bring in one. Yeah. I need, we need to consider the size of the audience or, or the potential for the size of the audience and and prepare accordingly we want to make sure that everyone has a nice experience right uh, and so yeah but it's not that difficult okay it could happen because i know that i've seen you in fact mom sent us a picture of madden who's now 17 i think at the time she was 
seven or f- six, you came down to the Enumclaw Street Fair. Yep. Did, did the street fair, and Madden's out there dancing right in the middle. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it was nice. like one of those things where it's just like, man, like that's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that is just so much fun to know yeah. that that uh, it's just been a and, and also that you're still doing it. I think that is a major kudos to you on that. Like that is something to where you didn't get yourself into any trouble, right? <laughs> I mean, Nothing the, I couldn't get squirm, out of. squirm my way out of. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you you kept at it. You're still doing it, and it's something that I think is kind of rare. I mean, I don't know. You did, yeah. I think the big thing is you didn't get yourself in any trouble. <laughs> I mean, well, you can say, you know, uh, what else would I do? Mm. Uh, you could also, what better thing to do? Yeah. Uh, the thing thing that keeps me on track is doing this. Mm-hmm. If I don't do this, then what what am I? Yeah, I'm a I'm a ship without a rudder. Right. Mm-hmm. I need I need the rudder, and and it served me well. Yeah. It's good it's good to have some stick with something. Mm-hmm. Al Pacino said it when he accepted his Academy Award. <laughs> he said, I think, "Well, I guess it's true." It, pays to stick with something <laughs> <laughs> now you know the things that come up in your mind right the big boogers that come up is like well you you know shouldn't you maybe give this up and pack it in and uh, there's little things that somebody said you know that yeah. maybe uh, you know and so you there's a certain amount of reinventing yourself right i can't i i'm not this i'm not that i'm not that anymore mm-hmm. i can't right. do, I'm not, I mean, he, he had fun. Mm-hmm. We had a good time together. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm something, I'm apart from that. Yeah. But I'm also more than that. Right. I've grown beyond that, and I, can, and I have powers beyond that that I didn't have then. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is pretty cool because when I was in my prime as a child, that's when that came out, yeah. right? But I grow up, I become a teenager, I move out, you know, I become, I, yeah. I grow up, and then I revisit as a as a parent with my own children. That's what you do as a, as a parent. You, you force them to do all the things that you did as a kid that brought you joy, and, and then the things you didn't, like soccer. I hated soccer, but my kid's going to do it because I did soccer kind of a thing. Um, I, w- when we were reading, when I was reading, I think you sent it. It was the mm. TimNoah.com biography. biography. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, he did way more than the Wow Wow. Like, <laughs> Like, but that's what I remembered when I was a kid, right. you know, and then I grow up and that's not what Well, I'm... But also, remember, uh, I had my brother and sister-in-law, and this was the focus at mm. that time. Primarily, this is what got promoted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when they were gone, who's going to yeah. Who's mm-hmm. gonna get the word out? Yeah. Mm. I was still writing new things, mm-hmm. still creating new things, and, you know, good things happened. Uh, the the TV show is on won a bunch of Emmy awards. I won yeah. some more awards and things like that. But in terms of my career as like what I'm known for, it's this because this this got the most attention. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not so bad. Not no. so bad. Not at all. Yeah, not at so least bad. I got something. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and it was a good. It w- at least it wasn't something where people said, "Oh yeah, he's the guy that did that <laughs> awful thing." <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> he's the guy that did that. Yeah. 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 And their li- eyes light up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, legacy. A great legacy. Not so bad. Yeah, not no. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, any before we wrap up, any questions from you guys that you guys may have during the, I know you guys have chimed in, but any I don't have a question. I just have uh I mean, just thanks for for doing this cuz this is a pretty special thing, you know, to be able to do this and to be able to actually talk to you face to face. And I'm sure as a kid, I would have had that opportunity opportunity as well. But now as an adult, you know, I guess 25, 30 years removed from that, it's, it's that, that much more special. And I also wanted to say that your thank you song is very nice. And, and it's, uh, I think it's channeling that, what you were just talking about, that sort of like the different sort of facets of your life that you've moved through and experienced since the wow, wow, you know, this, this, uh, I don't know. It, it it speaks to multiple generations. Lots of those songs do as well, but in a different way. This this felt. Um, I don't know. It felt very 
mature for for everybody. It's sort of a song. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for saying so. Yeah. Back at you. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I am uh, truly grateful f- for your interest in my work and and for all the kind things that you've said yeah. and your thoughtful questions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, ha- happy to be with you. Happy to happy yeah. to be this is, happy to. <laughs> this day has turned out fantastic. Yeah, it was I just I wanted to just say yeah. one thing just about like again like the th- gratefulness that I feel. Um, the one of my fears or and it's not even a big fear, but it's kind of looking ahead in my life um, as I grow older and age and things mm-hmm. like that, and I'm worried that yeah. whether the things that I get invigorated by are still going to be there. Mm -hmm. you know, 30 years down the road. And to see that as we're walking your property, you're talking about going for, you know, starting up running again, or Mm -hmm. um, just the things that it doesn't matter your age, that Mm -hmm. you can still create and you can still be excited and you can still, you know, have dreams and make them come true. It's, um, (laughs) it's really, it just inspires me and gives me, uh, you know, the the boogers that I might have about later on. They're Mm -hmm. just, they're Mm -hmm. just that. Just flick them away. <laughs> How nice! <laughs> yeah, How it nice is. of you to say so. I, I'm, if if I've done nothing else, if I've helped inspire you in some small way, then uh, I, I'm eternally grateful. Yeah, yeah you have to, definitely. You, you, I couldn't believe the reach you had, and you know, in the sense of like all of these friends that were just like. I love him. <laughs> he was awesome. And how it was a mutual love. Yeah. But it's it not was... just a stage thing too. Like I think there's a stage persona that people have and like they can walk away. But to see that like the behind the scenes of who you are here and what you're still yeah. wanting to give back, it's like it's a full body thing. Yeah. And yeah. Thank I, you. yeah. Well love is it. Love is all there is. Mm. Mm. It's the only power in the universe. Everything else is distraction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stay in the love. Stay with the love. Stick with the love. <laughs> we'll do. That's the place to be. Love it. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. And please go check out timnoah.com. Please go check out, check out Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater. And then also Beyond the Pond. When that's uh, a pond, pond beyond, beyond. Oh, the pond. <laughs> it's okay. You're not the first. Don't let the big booger beat you. <laughs> You're not the first that's done that. And there that. is, there's other things out there. There's a book I think called the, the, the Beyond the Pond. I think it's a book. Okay. And there's also an LLC called the Pond Beyond, which is a a an, uh, landscaping company or they do water landscaping or, plug for them too. no no free ads yeah. here no yeah. kidding um yeah. Yeah. So, they sponsor but, us yeah. now, so the, so say it again i'm gonna mess it up the pond, right. beyond? the pond beyond yeah that's the right one that's correct okay the pond <laughs> now you've got the, me confused the yeah. pond beyond <laughs> And uh, does that have a website, Facebook that they can like? Is there it, something that they it can? It has both. It has a, a website and a, and a Facebook. The Facebook page is still pretty s- little known, okay. but uh, you can also get connected to it through timnoah.com or uh, my Facebook page, timnoah.com. We also have Tim Noah Productions. Uh, so search, Facebook, yeah. Uh, Facebook search page. Tim Noah on Facebook. Like yeah. his pages. He's You'll got find pages. stuff. You'll find stuff. Yeah, cool, awesome. Thanks everyone for listening. Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate you big time growing up, and then also just right now. Glad You're to be a great here. Guy. Thank you for coming out. Yeah.